We're going to have a look at an application of exponential functions, but before we get into that, we're just going to have a look at how exponential functions are pretty weird. Okay. Okay. So the reason why these things are so weird is because with the general form, b can be anything or alternatively k can be anything. Okay, so here's an example as to um, try and illustrate. We'll construct an exponential function that passes through the two points, 0, 4, and 2, and 108. So we know a general form takes this. Right, and so we could try and solve this using some simultaneous equations. So I'll take my first point here, which is the point 0, 4, and I'll substitute in and solve. Okay, and so that is kind of nice. That first point gives us that a is equal to four. So we say, therefore, our current situation is we've got four times b to the power of kx. But the problem is here is that now we've used this point here. Now we're only left with one point that we can use but we've got two unknown variables to solve, which is the b and the k. And we know that we can't do that, okay? We need more than one point. And so this is the point I'm trying to illustrate here is that you can pick a value for b to be anything, and the constant value for k will make up whatever that value is. Okay, so I'm gonna consider two cases. Okay, so we're going to consider the case when b is equal to 2 and we're going to find that k coefficient which gives the function. Okay, so when we consider b being equal to 2, we can solve it through, okay? And what we get is a value 4k, we get an exact value and a decimal approximation of just 2.377. That means, therefore, that means we've got the equation y equals 4 times by b, our base number is 2, to the power of 2.377x. Okay, that is our equation that goes through those two points. I'm also going to consider this one to be is equal to 3. Okay, and so I'm just going to stop at this point here, okay, because we should know that our log with base of 3 of 27 is just equal to 3. Okay, and so that actually gives us a nice value for k. Okay, we get k is actually equal to 1.5. Okay, 1.5. Therefore, what that means is, now my claim here is that these two, and this is where exponential functions become pretty weird, these two are congruent, okay? They're, they're the same function. They give you the exact same line on the Cartesian plane, okay? And so we'll have a jump into decimals, which explains a why. This graph here, which is when the base was a two, and this graph here when the base was three, and we can see that those k coefficients have actually truncated. And so we've got the points 0, 4, and 2, and 0 0.8. As we can see here, at least this blue line goes through the both of them, but if I hide that, the red line goes through both of them. So they actually overlap each other, okay, which is quite interesting. Now, what's also interesting, okay, to point out why they are congruent, is that we notice that everything in the equation is the same except for this part here. Okay, and so if we just do a little further elaboration of this down here. Okay, now if you put them both into your calculator, this one's gonna give you 5.196, and this one gives you 5.194. Okay, and so they're not exactly equal, um, but they would be equal because this was uh, this value here was an approximation. And so that's why we're kind of off by a small decimal there, okay? And so we can kind of jump into, and then this is where it gets, I guess, hopefully we're wrapping, wrapping our heads around at this point. But that kind of means that these two functions, they're actually the same thing as y equals four times by 5.194.
the power of x. And that is actually the same as that function, and it's actually the same as that function there. Okay, so this is where exponential functions gets a little bit, I guess, kind of weird. Okay, but it's just got to do with how you can evaluate base numbers with powers and you can choose different base numbers and the power will fix up the algebra for you. So we can see when we evaluate it 2 to that power of k and then 3 to the power of k we get the base number of 5.196. Now this is going to show up in a black and it actually overlaps those two lines and goes through those two points. Okay so we're just going to jump into another example here with um, a population of aardvarks. Okay, this would be an application of exponential functions okay, where the number of things with respect to a variable just grows okay, and it keeps growing and growing and growing at a faster rate okay, and population is one of those things. So the population of aardvarks in Africa can be modelled. Important to point out here that base number of 1.15 is, is quite arbitrary because we know that this value 4k in the power will just fix up. Okay, whatever the growth factor should be. Okay, so here it just says, the first one here, determine the number of art box in 2020. Okay, that is when, so that occurs when t is equal to zero. I wanna know what's n. Okay, so n equals 20, but that's not the number of art box, okay, because n is the number of art box per thousand. Okay, so it wouldn't be 20, it would be 20,000. So therefore, 20,000. Okay, and then so as we move through this question, we're given a bit of additional information. Uh, but it was known that in 2010, the population was 8,000. Use this information to find the value for K. Now, in 2020, uh, sorry, in 2010, T would have been equal to negative 10. Because when we are in 2020, t was equal to zero. So we go back 10 years. Okay, and also if 8,000 aardvarks are there, n is going to be equal to eight. Because remember, n represents per thousand. Okay, so we just throw all this stuff in. We've got a model n equals. 20 times by 1.15 to the power of k t. We're just going to substitute in and solve. So n, n is equal to 20, and t is equal to negative 10. We just need to solve this equation for k. I'm going to simplify things a little bit. So 8 is equal to 20 times by 1.15 to the negative 10 k. If I divide both sides by 20, I get I get 0 0.4 is equal to 1.15 to the power of negative 10 k. Uh, I can just do a direct translation. Well, I know this power is equal to log of the base number of 0 0.4. 0 0.656. Okay. Therefore, our model is actually n equal to the power of 0.656t. Okay, the third part of this question is saying sketch for the sketch this model, sketch this model right here, for the years between the years of 2000 to 2040. Now, at least we're going to express our years in terms of t and that is going to define our domain. So we're just gonna define a domain first for sketching. All right, if we're starting at the year 2000, that is when T was equal to negative 20, and we're going all the way up to the year 2040, that's when T was equal to 20. So our domain is going to be negative 20. Okay, now this is all well and good, but we uh, remember we are sketching an exponential function, so we've got a five-step process for that. Asymptotes, intercepts, shape. Okay, once we do that, we look and see if we need a second point. In this case, we won't because we've already got two points. And then we just sketch it. So we start off, what are the asymptotes? Okay, 
Okay, at least in this case for our model, we do not have a value, a constant value that's getting added on. So uh, D is equal to zero, therefore N equals zero is an asymptote. Okay, next thing, we're gonna look for some intercepts. Okay, so just immediately beginning off, if I wanted to find the t-intercept, I know that is in this case the x-intercept, and there's not gonna be one. Okay, but we'll just show you what the algebra looks like when there's not an, uh, an x-intercept, or in this case a t-intercept. Okay, and so we get to this point here, we've got a log with a base of 1.15 of zero is equal to 0.656t. Now this thing has no solutions, that's not possible. Because like saying one point, this in other words, it's like saying 1.15 to the power of what is equal to zero. Okay, and there's nothing, all right? We can't raise 1.15 to any power to get it equal to zero. So at this point, there is no solutions. Okay, but we already knew that. Okay, so then we are going to try and find a T, uh, an N intercept. Okay, and N equals 20, and we already knew that because that was actually one of our initial points. Okay, that was part A. Third part we're gonna consider here is the shape. Okay, so the two things that we need to consider with shape is does it grow or does it decay and is it reflected or is it not reflected? Okay, so first point is it has growth as the value of B is not fractional and the index is positive. So B is greater than one and it is not reflected. A is positive okay, and so is B. So with that in mind, we know that it's going to look like this. Okay, it's gonna have growth. That's gonna be the long-term behavior. It shoots up and then it asymptotes off at zero. So finding a second point, we don't need to do that because we, have, we already know two points from before. So now we just need to put all this information together and sketch it on a Cartesian plot. Okay, and so here we have got a little bit of a sketch for this model here, okay? Now remember, this model was all about the population growth of aardvarks. Now, part D of our question is saying, what are the strengths and what are the limitations of this model? So this is worth uh, discussing. So we know one of the strengths about this model is that we know it's actually, uh, it's a pretty good model, okay? It's actually a really good prediction between T being negative 10 and T being zero, okay? That's in particular, I'll highlight this on the graph. That's this section of the graph here. Now the reason I say that that's a strength is because we have been given direct data from that. Okay, that was the year 2020, uh, 2010 to 2020. Okay, now we were observing the population of aardvark. So we know that there's actually growth happening. We can see that green line shows a bit of growth. That is a strength of the model. It's really, really good. Okay, between those points. Okay, because we've got actual data. So. Okay, now remember it's gonna be strength of the model itself, so it's of the graph. Now a limitation, a limitation. It's kind of like the opposite of the strength, okay? If it's actually really good between T being negative 10 and T being zero, okay, which is 2010 to 2020, how do we know how accurate this is here? How do we know the accuracy of this line here? Okay, what if, what if it went like this and then the population just decided to plateau out. Something happened maybe in five years time and then so it kind of looked like that. The population just flattened out. Or maybe the population went down, okay? This model tells me that the population is going to continue to rise. And so that is a limitation of this model because we can only use the past to make predictions about the future, but that is always going to be a limiting factor because we do not know what's going to happen in the future for sure. We're just making good judgments based on the past. Okay, and so I've just said, because it doesn't consider confounding variables, 